Good morning, dear friends, and the greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a brand new day, and the day the Lord has given us. Let us choose to rejoice and be glad in this day. And because this day will never happen again. And the Lord is with you. And today, let us begin our lives with this meditation. Today's meditation is based on the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Recognizing false teachers and the false teaching. Jesus Christ, the Lord of the church, has warned us that in the last days, false prophets and false teachers shall invade the church in great numbers. As the last days are coming to a close, they are appearing in our churches in great numbers, and many are drawn away from the truth. I warn my listeners not to be deceived. The Lord Jesus Christ has sent us the Holy Spirit whose gifts are to be exercised in these closing days of the last days. One of the gifts is discernment. And it is very important that we depend absolutely on the Holy Spirit these days and pray for discernment to be given to you to avoid getting entangled with the wrong and false teachings. They are very deceptive, and therefore you need to discern what you are hearing is the truth of God's word or man's fancies. How do we recognize the false teacher? Jesus said the way to do it. How do we recognize a tree, whether it is good or bad? By its fruit. In the same way, a false teacher can be recognized by the fruit he brings forth in his character. It is very important. False teachers are outwardly righteous, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. In the same chapter of Matthew, verse 15, we read it. We can identify them by their fruit. We can identify them by watching what character they bring forth. The fruit of false uh, teachers will be unwholesome characteristics, evident in the lives of their followers. First John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Please take note of these references and read them soon after this meditation. I will mention five of these characteristics that we can notice. They will be, number one, they will be professing Christians whose loyalty is more to personalities than to the word of God. In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 77, verse 21. They worship the creature rather than worship the creator himself. As it is mentioned in Romans, chapter 1, verse 25. And in number two, they will be more concerned with their own desires than God's glory and his honor. Their teaching will be more self-centered than God-centered and God-honored. They seek more fame and name and gain rather than God's glory and honor and praise. So that they, after they speak, after they preach, after they teach, their more concern is what people think of him rather than 
what people think of Jesus whom he declared. And they seem to draw attentions of people more to themselves. And it is a very dangerous thing. And this we read in read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 23, 21 to 23. And thirdly, they value human teachings and traditions even when those teachings seem to be contradicting to God's own word, the unchanging eternal word. Read Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. And then 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. These references are very important and I would like you to read uh, and then compare it to what I am saying. And number four, they go after religious experiences and uh, supernatural manifestations um, to validate the truth. Uh, that is a very dangerous thing. They depend on their religious experiences, the, uh, the, the supernatural manifestations, and they use for them, this, these are their final authorities in validating the truth. My friends, that is the main cause of there should be only one standard and one measurement that we must use to validate the truth that is the unchanging eternal word of an eternal god who is unchanging and we must accept god's word alone the as the only standard and measurement to validate the truth of God's word. And I pray that all of us will be, will be wiser in choosing the standard. There should be no other standard except what is given to us by the mercy of God, the written word. And number five, you know, these teachers, false teachers, will not tolerate sound doctrine, but will seek teachers who will offer salvation with a broad rod of unrighteousness. Read again Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Then 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Now, by noticing these, characteristics of both the teacher and his followers. See, their followers also will be converted to what they are. And uh, one of the mark of these false te teachers, they are very arrogant. They would not listen to anybody else. And so it is very important that uh, we see, first of all, uh, divine, godly, Humility. And you will notice some, many of these people who are false, they are very proud. And therefore, they don't want to admit that they are wrong and they don't listen to anybody. But God's servants must be humble and they are really servant leaders. They are there, they know they are there to serve people. And therefore they need to be absolutely very careful what they teach their followers. And those who teach the pure, unchanging, undiluted and uh, uncompromising word of God are the approved of God. So keep watch. And it is very important for you because God wants you to be strong and firm, established, grounded and established in the knowledge of the unchanging eternal word. When you hear, the Bereans had a wonderful quality. In the book of Acts, it says, 
The Bereans were very special. They heard the word of God that the apostles were proclaiming, but they did not accept readily. They, they, they took it and they took the teaching. Then at home, they checked with the scriptures whether they taught them and they proclaimed is really according to God's scriptures. And they accepted because they knew that these apostles were preaching and declaring the true, uncompromising, undiluted God's word. And so, my friends, you need to be choosy even about a fellowship that you belong to. You need to know what the teaching is. And for that, you yourself must know the Word of God, the Bible, well. So read and study as much as possible uh, that you may be a man of God, a, a good student of God's Word. As the Apostle Paul says, study to prove yourselves to be a workman who need not to be ashamed. Otherwise, at the coming of the Lord, we shall be found lacking and we shall be ashamed. We may get into heaven somehow, but we will be losing many rewards and losing many, uh, many, many things that God wants to give you even in heaven. God bless you as you sincerely seek the Lord and guidance. Father, I pray for everyone who listened to this meditation. As they begin their day, let the word of God abide in them very richly. And let them, uh, let them grow in their love for your word. So that by studying it, by giving themselves to the word and applying the principles of your word, they may be established and grounded and rooted in the knowledge of God's word. Thank you so that nothing sh can shake their faith and their conviction. In Jesus' name. God bless you, my friends. Have a wonderful day and a good day. Live victoriously for God's own glory. Amen.